Sometimes we throw around the phrase, it's the thought that counts, in a way that makes it cliche. Meaning, we say it with a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek, we're saying it in a way to belittle the message or the significance that's underlying that sentiment. And indeed, we occupy a world that's often bottom line oriented. Did we deliver the good on time or not? Did they win or did they lose? Last week, I went to go pick up a piece. I traveled really far to get a piece for a broken hose. They didn't have it. When I got back, my wife didn't say, it's the thought that counts, honey. She said, go to a different store. So yes, there are times where we actually have to deliver. We have to be result oriented, but there are also times in our life, specifically in relationships, whether it's with people or with Hashem, that we should be thinking about the significance of the intention, the significance of the effort, and not being so reductionist to just think about the bottom line. This notion of the thought, that it's the thought that counts, is actually alluded to in a really stunning midrash on Parshat B'chukotai. We're familiar with the curses with the dark description of the negative consequences of disobeying Hashem and His will in our Parsha this week. The Torah transitions from that dark description with the following pasuk. V'zacharti et briti Yaakov, v'af et briti Yitzchak, v'af et briti Avraham ezkor, v'haaret ezkor. Hashem says that even though you've disappointed me and you might be deserving of some of these punishments, I will still in the long run remember the deal, remember the covenant that I made with Avraham, with Yitzchak, and with Yaakov. Rashi asks a question about the word zechira, which is mentioned three times in this pasuk, once in regard to Avraham, once in regard to Yaakov, and also a third time in regard to the land, Ba'aretz Ezkor. But it's missing in, ref in regard to Yitzchak. Why isn't the Brit of, Avraham, of Yitzchak excuse me, remembered? And Rashi says something astounding. He says, Why isn't that word mentioned? I don't need to remember Yitzchak because his ashes are ever present in front of me, resting on the altar. This is a eerie image to conjure up in our minds that the ashes of Yitzchak are present before Hashem what does that even mean? It seems to, the Midrash seems to indicate that the Akedah actually took place, but we know that it didn't. So where did these ashes come from? This tangible manifestation, this result of the Akedah, how could this be real? So I think the idea, and this is what Rabbi Eldar shares in his Sefer on the Parsha, is that the fact that Avraham was willing to go through with the Akedah made it as if he did go through with the Akedah. The fact that Avraham was willing to subsume his moral compass into the tzivoy, into the commandment of Hashem, the fact that he was willing to self-negate, to self-sacrifice to such an extent to make space for Ratzon Hashem, the will of God, that had consequences, even though Yitzchak was not sacrificed in the end of the day. This, this point underscores the idea that sometimes it really is the effort, the intention, and the thought that counts. A few weeks back, we invited some people for a Shabbos meal, they got sick and they couldn't make it. We had already cooked, we had already made all the food, and because we intended to do the mitzvah, even though we didn't have the opportunity to do so because circumstance got in the way, the fact that we wanted to sincerely and honestly to help and welcome other people into our home 
matters. It counts in the column of credit for mitzvot. Because in the spiritual domain, we really do need to take seriously the fact that it is the thought that matters. With that, I'll look forward to seeing everyone in Shul this Shabbat. See you soon.